Good morning, HVAC team. I uh, hope everybody's staying safe, staying healthy, staying home. Hopefully this whole thing will be over soon and we can get back to class. But until then, we still got work to do. So, mm, excuse me, let's go ahead and jump into it. We're gonna be talking about chapter four today, which is hand tools and power tools. So, the objectives are identify the major tools used in HVAC work, describe how the uh, major HVAC tools are used, explain the safety procedures required for using different types of tools, demonstrate how to care for tools. It is important for technicians to keep their hand tools and, uh, sorry, keep their hand tools in good shape. <clears throat> Clean and well-maintained tools will last for a long time. Tools and equipment should always be used in a safe manner. Toolkits are available for most, uh, for most types of jobs. They include kits for wrenches, screwdrivers, pliers, and knives. Kits are also available for adjustable Allen and refrigeration wrenches. Specialty tools can be added, um, can be added over time as funds become available. As funds become available is, a, is that, that's a, that's a good statement right there. Um, a lot of times I've been working with people who don't wanna spend the money and that you might as well just quit now. Just don't even get in this trade if you're gonna be that kind of tech because I mean, we're, we're not in this to, to, to not make money. We're not in this to not be, you know, stable, you know, and the ones who are not stable are the ones who have fast everything. And one of those things is their tool game. Like if people notice, coworkers notice, but more importantly, your superiors notice. If you ain't got the tools as a as an apprentice, that's understandable. But if you're not, but 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 there's two kinds of apprentices. There's the hungry one that's constantly getting a little bit here and there and constantly showing it off. Like yeah, I just got these, just got those. Those are the hungry, energetic good you know apprentices that people want those are the ones that move up the ranks and then there's the other ones who use that as an excuse you know man they only paying me this much you know what i mean i just started blah 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 I, you know and they just don't they don't catch on and they don't want to spend the money and get their stuff and um those dudes don't go for you know i mean if you're not making enough to get tools now <laughs> You 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 really ain't gonna be able to. You ain't gonna be making enough. You you gonna be ten years later still not making enough to buy no tools <clears throat> because you're not impressing anyone. You gotta try to. It really is for your benefit, but it also it impresses the boss. I do it all the time. Well, I used to do it all the time when when I was working for other companies out in the field. Um, I would make it a point to buy a, you know any any tool that I saw that they had that I didn't have. I would I would get it. If it was an expensive tool, I wouldn't get it right away, but it'd be on my wish list. But I would get the things that I could afford, and I would always, you know, make sure I showed up with it and, and make it a point to point it out. I'll slide it in conversation some kind of way, you know what I mean, just so it could go on notice that I'm making the effort. Um, again, it's to your benefit. You're going to, um, you're going to, it's going to make your job easier, but just don't be one of those, those dudes that just refuse to buy tools. Um, I, you know, like I said, I work with those kind of guys and it, it, it doesn't, it, it, it's just not a good look. Um, you're going to constantly be buying them. You're going to be breaking them, losing them, getting them stolen. So just get used to it. Just get accepted right now that you're going to be buying tools. And it honestly, it should be a hobby. Um, like I said in the other video, I, I love it. I love it. I go to hardware stores and swap meets and I get excited. It, it's, they like toys to me and I make money with them. I, I mean, it, it the, I, the my my the stuff that I've accumulated over the years is worth like thousands, and it's it's all paid for itself multiple times. Like you can literally, you can do one job over the weekend, and 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 make your money back on all, all your tools that you've accumulated over the years. Like it's you know it's 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 money to be made in this field. But if you get hung up on little stuff like oh man I don't want to have to keep buying stuff then you're not looking at the big picture because it's a lot of money to be made. You know, $20 here and there ain't nothing. You know, $200 here and there ain't nothing because you're going to be, you're going to make that back easily. So anyway, move on. I, I could literally, I can go on forever. Like 
I get excited and disgusted at the same time when I talk about that. Like excited about having, you know, to a, my, you know, expanding my collection and making money with it. Then I get disgusted at the ones who don't see the correct, you know, point of view when it comes to investing in yourself. So, uh, you know, we're investors. This trade is not for, th th this is a thinking man's trade and a thinking man is an investing man and, uh, you know, investing yourself. So, slotted and Phillips are the two most common types of screwdrivers. Uh, slotted or flathead is the more common term. Uh, they were meant to be used to tighten and loosen screws, not as punch or pry bars. I don't know. Um, we often use every as an at least as installers. Every installer got that one big old uh, flathead that they use to pry on stuff. They use, they call it some people call it a beater, uh, whatever they call them. But you'll see, everybody got a big flathead that they use improperly to beat stuff and puncture stuff and pry stuff. So that's just part of it. But that's not what it's intended for, but whatever. Uh, so six-way and 11-way screwdrivers are becoming quite popular. These types have multiple heads and one convenient handle. <clears throat> I made that face because I wish I had my tool bag with me. I, I wanted to show my 11 and one. Um, I bring one of the things I do in the class is I always bring my tools in to show you guys the different kind of tools that we use and to even give my recommendations on which are the good ones and which ones suck. So uh, that's what that face was because I, I I wish I had my tools in front of me, but um, but we'll have plenty of time to do that. I bring my it's it's in my trunk right now because I bring it to work every day, so you guys can uh, whenever we need it, I'll have it. You guys can get a chance to use a lot of the tools of the trade. So pliers for mechanical work, slip joint pliers are used for holding parts and for grabbing. The adjustment is used for grabbing larger work. Tongue and groove or pump pliers, or as we call them, channel locks, um, are used for holding larger objects such as gas piping. Wrenches, so these are your service wrenches or your refrigeration wrenches that they're showing right here. Um, <clears throat> that's what you use to open valves and uh, on refrigeration systems. So, Service valve wrenches are special use tools for refrigeration systems. They have a square head and include a ratchet mechanism. And uh, there's different sizes as well for larger valves and smaller valves. You just flip it over depending on what side uh, or what size you need. Each side is a different size. Use some regular open end wrenches, commonly used for nuts and bolts, box and open end wrenches are used throughout the HVAC industry. Always gotta have a set of those. Half inch, nine sixteenths, those are like the uh, most common ones that you'll use, but you need a set because you're gonna run into every single size out there. I also, I would also recommend metric tools as well. Maybe not a, I don't have a metric rent set, but I do have metric a, a metric Allen wrench set, and I have a metric um, uh, nut driver set. Because sometimes, man, some of these weird manufacturers, they got these metric uh, size nuts and screws and stuff on their on their equipment. So you might run into it. I've I've never needed a metric, uh, you know, wrench. But again, I have used, um, I have needed like a metric nut driver before. So something to think about as well. Socket handles, uh, socket handles are sized by length and size. They include torque wrench handles that can be used to tighten the heads of uh, the heads on compressors. Socket torque and pipe wrenches. Socket handles are sized by length and size. They include torque wrench handles that can be used to tighten the heads on compressors. Again. So just a different type. This one's got the little swivel action on it for getting in the hard to reach areas. Hammers, punches, and chisels. So this right here, 
that is my baby right there. You're going to use that all the time and as an installer, at least. <clears throat> that is your sheet metal hammer, but you also need your clawed hammer. I got a ball peen hammer that I have never used, but they're, they're there. So the most common types of hammers include ball peen, sheet metal, and clawed mallets. Claw and mallets. Uh, you're definitely going to need a rubber mallet because sometimes you might need to bang on the side of a compressor to unjam the, uh, the, the pistons. but um, or just to jump start it, sometimes you need to bang it, but obviously you don't want to do that with metal and damage the compressor or your wrist. So a uh, rubber mallet is good to have. They don't have one in this picture. A clawed hammer, you're always going to need, always, because, again, as installers, you're going um, to gonna come across nails. You're going to have to pull nails, and the sheet metal hammers don't have a claw in the back to pull a nail, or you don't want to sink nails with the sheet metal hammer either. You want to use a good clawed carpenter's hammer if, you, if you're actually going to be putting nails into something. And we do do a lot of carpentry as, uh, as AC installers. Um, when it comes to simple stuff like um, we have to frame out our holes when we have to open up a hole for attic access or a, a return register or something like that. Um, so anyways, you, you, a, lot, a lot of time I find myself doing, you know, some carpenter work and I have to pull out my hammer and, you know, put some nails in. As often as I can, I, I'd rather use screws and a drill, but um, you're going to need it. You need to keep a clawed hammer around. Um, punches and chisels. The most common types of chisels are uh, machinists. Machinists, cape, and rivet buster. Uh, they all have definite uses and should be used properly. Punches are used to mark holes, drive pins, and align holes. I usually do all that stuff with a screwdriver, but you know, I'm old school. <laughs> Vices and clamps. <clears throat> more so plumbers, this kind of uh, vice here is more so used for in plumbing, but we do use vices. We got some vices in the classroom that we use when we're doing our phrasing projects. Um, so anyway, a machinist vice uh, can be mounted in a service van. A pipe vice, um, a pipe vice is used on a tripod stand and is used for threading. C clamps are used to hold work wrench. I'm sorry, work which cannot be held in a vice. Can't read today, but yeah. So threading, something that's useful in our trade, but not something that we do often. Uh, plumbers do it all the time. Um, I just don't like to do it. I, I'm not good at it. I, I I just buy pieces that I need that are already threaded when I'm doing Because the only time we would need that in our trade is for gas piping. And the gas pipe, you know, I usually just buy the threaded, you know, pieces that are threaded already and just get a variety of different sizes and just put them together as needed. Uh, we'll get into all that, uh, you know, later in the modules. So knives and scrapers. Knives include combination blade and razor knives. They are used for a number of HVAC functions. Scrapers and putty knives are used for such things as scraping gaskets. Apply a light film of oil when, uh, when not in use to prevent rusting. Taps and dies. Taps and dies are used for, uh, to form female threads. Dies are used to form male threads. So again, something that I really avoid. Um, it's just, uh, it's, so the threads, we all know what the threads are. The threads are those like spiral things on the screw and there are different sizes and, and, uh, and they're used to fasten things together. When the threads get damaged on a screw, whether or, or in a nut, those threads can be fixed using the tap or a die. Um, it's a, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a gamble, you know, at least for me, some people are real skilled at using those and they, they can fix a thread in a heartbeat. Me, I, I've tried it a couple of times. I got it to work once. And usually I don't, um, I just replace the parts. I, I don't try to fix them. So anyway, power tools. Make sure you are familiar with the tool you are using. Be sure it is correctly grounded. Got a little jigsaw. Uh, power tools. Maybe circular or reciprocating. Also includes portable electric bandsaw. 
So I guess they're talking about saws. So this looks like a little jigsaw, which is basically a reciprocating saw. Sheet metal tools, getting more into my HVAC stuff. So we got some offset snips here, some more snips and some uh, sheet metal shears, uh, made for cutting sheet metal, available in right hand, left hand, and straight snips. So these are straight right here, these offset ones. These are uh, left snips. No, right hand snips. Piping and tubing. Used on soft copper, available in different sizes, in, uh, including mini cutters. Some include a ratcheting mechanism. What they're talking about is tubing cutters. These are your tubing cutters. These are what we use to cut our copper tubing. He has a larger one here. And I believe this one has the ratchet action where you can, instead of having to turn that knob, you can just push the wheel all the way up to the copper and then start turning the knob uh, gradually as you go around that copper to cut it. And we will definitely get a chance to do some cutting when we get back to class. <clears throat> do some cutting, brazing, a little bit of everything. And we, I mean, we do it till it gets boring. That way everybody, when you get to the field, you'll have a significant amount of things that you know how to do. Uh, and then, so here we have a tubing bender there's a bender here too. It's kind of hard to see. It just looks like a piece of pipe, but I'll go ahead and get a little closer. And you can, let me see. Okay, now you can see it a little bit. That slinky looking thing that's wrapped around the outside of that copper pipe, which goes from here to here, that is a bender. You put that around the pipe and then you bend it manually by hand and, it, and that little slinky keeps it from kinking while you bend it. But that's only really doable on smaller pipe. Anything bigger than seven eighths is gonna be pretty hard to bend by hand, damn near impossible. Um, and then here's a manual bender. Um, I like the the compact benders, excuse me, and um, which is something they're not showing here, but you'll get a chance to see it when we get back to class. There's a uh, much easier way of bending pipe. Uh, a level. Level is a very, very simple basic tool, but extremely valuable. Definitely need one. I mean, that's the only way that you're going to be able to know if, you're, if your unit is straight or not. It, it comes into play very often. You have to have a level in your toolkit. Uh, so three different positions for a carpenter's bubble level are shown. Horizontal, vertical, and angled. The red needle indicates the position in degrees as the magnetic angle uh, uh, the magnetic angle finder changes from a horizontal to an angled position. So most levels have three different um, bubbles. This, this one, this horizontal one, you can use when you put it, when your uh, level is vertical. Well, I, so if you're looking at the level at, in, in this horizontal position, you'll have a vertical one, a level one, and a 45. So the vertical one, when, you're le when your level is turned to the side up against a wall, if you want to see if your wall is straight, uh, then that one would be used. The normal one, when you're used to, using it on something horizontal, it would be this one in the middle. And then when you're trying to see if you got to a straight 45, then that angle one would be used. And in all three cases, you want to get the bubble in the middle. If the bubble's in the middle, then you know you're right. So in summary, tools are a significant investment and keeping them in good working condition is important. Care for tools is prescribed by their manufacturers, instructors, uh, sorry, instructions to keep them working properly and dispense dependable for uh, years of service. Use the proper tool for the proper job. Misusing tools can damage the tool and may be hazardous to you. Avoid putting dirty tools back in the toolkit. Clean tools after each use to make the next job go smoother. Watch trade journals and supply house for ads on new tools. So that is chapter four.
That's all about tools. And um, again, treat your tools like your kids, man. They, they're important, they're valuable. It's the best investment, the most important investment for, uh, for tradesmen like ourselves. Um, you, you can't, you know, you're only as good as your tools. So make sure you invest in your tools. Don't be the guy on the job site that's constantly borrowing tools. Um, nobody likes that guy. And then also the employer won't take you seriously because you don't take yourself seriously because you're not even investing in, in proper tools. So definitely, definitely um, be the opposite. Be the guy that got all the tools. It's just like in high school, you want to be the dude that got the fresh J's when they first dropped. Like be that guy with the tools, you know what I mean? When they come out with a new, you know, Husky tool bag or a new DeWalt tool backpack or something, be the first one to get that. You know, they already got DeWalt got the new cordless uh, saws off. Be the first one to get that. Show up with that. Those, that, that's your Jordans on the job site. It, it, it ain't, you know, ain't nobody wearing no actual Jordans, you know. Those is your J's, you know, your, your, your tools. So you want to be that pay less dude or you want to be the dude with the J's? That, that's that's kind of how I look at my tools. So, um, Anyways, uh, unit four or chapter four is on PlexiQuiz. So read your chapters. Hopefully this video was helpful and um, get your review questions done. And I will see you on the next one.